Th thanks, Rohan, and thank you for the opportunity to speak as part of this panel today. Um, I have disclosures, none of which are relevant for this talk. Um, as you've heard, video assessment is not new. We've heard that trainees are even practicing using these videos as a source for learning. Formal assessment, however, really mostly consists of written exams, oral exams, and simulation, all of which are somewhat removed from actual practice. So maybe we should be using video for our actual evaluation process. We just finished a session across the hall on bias. You know, if you watch somebody do surgery, if you like them, you're gonna say they're a better surgeon than if you don't like them. That's not really the best way to be saying are they actually technically competent. So if we can remove some of that bias, video may actually be even a better way than directly watching that person learn. And you can take all of the, the bias and conflict of a personality out of that. Um, so what do you want to look at when you're looking at a potential assessment? You want to make sure it meets all of these criteria. And I think in some of the video assessment modalities that are out there, they're probably not doing all of these things that came out of a consensus conference in 2010, looking at validity, consistency, equivalence. These are all things that any good assessment tool is going to have. So what kind of things do we use for assessment now? As, as anybody in a fellowship council program knows, we use goals and gauges, right? You guys are actually evaluating your fellows with these now. At least you should be. Um, generic live intraoperative assessment. And what do we talk about? Tissue handling, flow, use of hands. So those are good basic things, and those are probably good things for a trainee starting. But if you're really looking for procedural competence, that's not really the things you need to be including in that assessment. So if you're looking for a specific procedure, we need to go more beyond that, and really what are the critical steps of that procedure? What's this thing that's important for safety of the patient, for potential outcomes? There is one validated assessment of a procedure, and that's for lab coli, um, and that's looking at simulated and live um, cholecystectomy procedures, and it was assessed. But really, that's the best thing that's out there right now that's published. So ideal tools are going to have similar rigor to the other kind of assessments we use, like multiple choice exams, OSCEs, oral exams. They've had a lot of background, a lot of validation, and we know these things really actually correlate with knowledge in those areas. And in performance exams, you've got the direct observation that may have something, but can we do better with video? So there are a couple studies that are out there um, that have used some video assessment of surgeons able to perform procedures. This is one um, that was for uh, pancreatic oduodenectomy, and this is probably even a better one um, that was used for colectomy. And it wasn't set up as a study of video assessment. What this was done, this is UK-wide. They were trying to increase the adoption of laparoscopy for colorectal surgery. And so what they did is they set up a training initiative to make sure that the surgeons were safe. They put them through this whole thing, and then they had a metric based on a Delphi consensus of what are the key steps, what should they be doing, and how can we assess those. And so then they looked at videos of people who completed the program to say, yeah, you're OK to go do this in the practice. And what they were able to show is using that validated metric and looking at the video assessment, they were able to differentiate people based on that assessment at different levels. So you got your experts, higher performers, you had your novices that passed, and your novices that failed, and the tool could differentiate those people. So you need to be able, when you have this kind of assessment, to really prove that it works. So there's another concept out there of who's evaluating these. So that was actually evaluated by surgeons in practice, similar to what Justin was doing. And this is Adnan's work, looking at crowdsourcing for video assessment. So if you talk about scaling these things up and using it on a much broader scale, which I'll talk about in a minute that we're thinking of doing through the Fellowship Council and through SAGES, um, who's going to spend all the time to evaluate those videos? And so crowdsourcing might be one way to get around that. And what Edinge was able to show is that trained non-medical observers could actually differentiate to some degree and correlated reasonably well with experts on video assessment, but couldn't differentiate the best level of performance. 
So out of this concept, though, there's a company called CSATS. Are you guys familiar with this? So some are and some aren't. So this is something, I'm not actually sure how I got identified, but they hit me up to be an expert for video review. I got some email, they asked me a couple questions, and now all of a sudden I'm on their website. I get links, and people are submitting videos, snippets of a procedure, to get evaluated and get feedback. So I think it's pretty good from the learning standpoint. Maybe it's along the line of what Melina wanted to present, where you can get some feedback from somebody. But I got a couple really scary things I heard at this meeting about this kind of technology. So a surgeon who's a friend of mine, who may or may not be in the room, I don't think so, um, told me they're using this for credentialing in his institution. So to get re-credentialed in a minimally invasive technology, they're actually having to submit videos to CSATs and get feedback back. And if you don't score high enough, you have to go and get retrained. I don't know if we know enough about this that we should be making those decisions. And there's another thing that happened. One of the companies, actually, who has recently purchased CSATs says, oh, this is going to take over for fellowship training. This is the next thing. You're going to go learn to do a procedure, get coaching feedback from the CSATs, and, and that's, that's the wave of the future. So I think we need to be very careful where we are with these things and what the next steps are and, and how fast we run because we may be causing ourselves a little more harm than good. So this is what we are doing in SAGES, and I think most of you are now familiar with the master's program where we've divided our curricular content up into several key areas based on acute care, bariatric, biliary, colorectal. And all these have different levels of um, potential learning that you're in the pathway through. And in those different levels, there's something we call an anchoring procedure. So what's the key procedure that represents that thing? So for instance, in the area of foregut, at the proficiency level, um, we're looking at lapnison. And so what we decided is this was actually going to be our first target, because this is something that's really central to most of our fellowships, to make a video assessment tool. So we had a retreat. This is a picture from our retreat this fall. I'm trying to come down with what, what are the basic concepts, what are the steps, what's the basic framework we thought we should use for this video assessment. Um, we modeled essentially after that lab code, the UK study that I showed and how they had interviews with subject matter experts. They looked at qualitative and quantitative assessment um, of those potential steps, did a task inventory, and I think all of you can actually help us with this. So we're actually now rating the importance of these different steps. There's a link to it through the meeting. And so we're trying really to make this a very comprehensive, very thoughtful tool. Um, this is the progress, and this is being run by Matt Ritter, Leanne's very intimately involved in this project as the exec oversight, looking at test specifications, a collection of videos. So we have an upload site if you guys are participating in any of these pilots, or if you can just send us some Latinus and videos, it would be helpful. Um, but to make this tool better, we actually need a range. So we don't want, as Justin pointed out, only your best videos. We need some that are bad. So if you have a, a resident that this is their first day and they're having trouble with their hands, that's actually some of the videos we actually want to collect. Um, and also some high-level expert videos. I think the whole spectrum is going to make our tool better. Um, Looking at where we go with this, we want to have a really validated, high-powered tool that we can use to say, at the end of fellowship, you can do a Nissen, and you can do it pretty much by yourself. So there's going to be a requirement to submit a video to be evaluated, if we can do this tool right, um, at the end of fellowship. Um, these are some of the things that we're looking at in terms of some of the scoring. And again, these are from Matt Redder, who presented this earlier and couldn't stay to the end of the week. Um, but visualization of the operative field. Now, instead of just hand-eye coordination, we're looking at hiatal dissection. We're looking at fundus mobilization. These are real steps, things that the subject matter experts think are important to the completion of the procedure. So these are what we're going to be evaluating in this tool. Um, and some of these other related skills are in there, and we think they're important, but these are where we think they're important in the procedure as well. So I think all these things will add up to make this a much more robust tool and can potentially give us something that maybe could be used for competency and potentially could be used for credentialing. So we'll be ready for prime time soon, but I don't think we're there yet. 
when we trial this, I think we're going to get some much more important feedback and see how that relates to potentially our outcomes. Um, and we'll see the other procedures which we'll have to develop once we get this first tool down as our pilot. And again, thank you. <laughs>